First and foremost, I want to give all glory, honor, and praises to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, double honors to the apostle, elders of Great Millstone, who rule well, and salutations to all you brothers out there who are pushing this word in love, truth, sincerity, and humility. Once again, it's the brother Shati from the Chicago camp, coming back to you with what I hope is another quick and edifying sit down. And today, I was watching, as usual, some videos on YouTube. And one of the channels that I frequently watch is Dave Hodges, The Common Sense Show. And this one just stood out just because of the title. And it says, Are You Having Prophetic Dreams and Visions? And I listened to it and the vision that he had was very biblical, but not according to what he believes it is, but what accord but what the bible says because later on he goes into some uh psychology and and all other types of pseudoscience as the scripture says a science falsely so called but the dream that he has is uh the vision that he has is is very profound and you know what We'll we'll just let Dave talk about it. We'll bring out some scripture, and then we'll close it on out. Ladies and gentlemen, I really have an interest in prophetic dreams. I never used to. I thought it was kind of unscientific, mumbo-jumbo, nonsense. Something you waste your time on, and I'm no longer thinking that one because I had what I'm, I fear is a, pro, a prophetic dream. And I've listened to the prophetic dreams of other people, and I want to talk briefly about the topic. And then I'm going to make an appeal to the general public. My name is Dave Hodges. I'm the host of the Common Sense Show, where the show that is freeing America one enslaved mind at a time. We're brought to you by Virtual Shield. They're freeing people to go on the internet one user at a time. How do they do it? Because they keep people from tracking where you're going. They de- they can't see into your computer. They can't hack into your computer. You're safe from identity theft. Virtual Shield is available to people for less than three dollars a month. Don't let the grass grow under your feet on this one. This is too good to pass up. Go to hide with dave.com that's hide with dave.com well prophetic dreams i had one that it was just horrendous and um i have to tell you ladies and gentlemen i'm disturbed and i'm bothered by what i'm about to tell you i had a dream about two and a half months ago and i talked about it on a radio interview i did and i talked about how the chinese tanks were coming down my street and i had a neighbor in my house and i'm telling him we gotta go we can't fight these people they're too well armed and they would pull up to a house they would fire their tank projectile into the house then they would run in and you'd hear gunshots and they presumably were killing everything in sight men women children pets didn't matter and they'd run out with the jewelry then they go to the next house and they do the same thing and i'm telling my friend we got to go we got to go now he stayed in my house i don't know what happened to him in the dream I grabbed my family, and we ran down the street. And as far as I know, we got away for safe cover, but I don't remember much of the end of the dream. Now, to have a dream like that for me is really interesting, and I'll tell you why. I'm what they call a thick boundary people. Oh, my my mom was right. She said, son, you're thick-headed. But in dream parlance with psychologists, the terms thick and thin boundary come into play. Thin boundary means people have vivid dreams, sometimes lucid dreams. They might dream in color. They can control the content to some degree. That's a lucid dream, and they're what we call thin boundary people. Thick boundary people like me are more left brain, you know, a little less right brain, artsy fartsy, and that uh, you don't tend to remember very many dreams and very and remember in very much detail. And for me to have a dream like this as a thick boundary person is a dramatic event in my life. It's a total shift from my brain chemistry and what my dream style has been. So I paid attention to it. I started to share this with people who I trusted. that They wouldn't think I was nuts and lost my mind. And they'd say, I've kind of had a similar dream. And I interviewed Ronnie McMullen recently. And he said, you know what, Dave, these dreams... He says, I had a prophetic vision and dream that uh, the mountain right next to Vandenberg Air Force Base was wiped out. And I've been getting a lot of people telling me about the dreams and visions they're getting. So what I wanted to do is rather 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 than elaborate more uh, completely, 
I'm asking for all of you to write me up a description. Tell me about dreams and visions you've seen. And that's pretty much it, because he goes into some, as I said before, some bugged out psychology. But what you can, well, what you have here is what is talked about here in the Bible, where the Most High said. Joel 2 and 28. And it says, And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, your old men shall dream dreams, and your young men shall see visions. All right? And basically, what Dave Hodges saw was martial law and the story that his friend told him he most likely had a vision of the nuclear missiles now you heard what dave said when he went to sleep he had a dream that chinese troops were in tanks rolling down the street all right putting that tank fire through the house and just going in there and completely shooting everything in sight, ransacking the place and going house to house doing it. He was with his friend, he was family, telling him, we got to go, we got to go. But his neighbor didn't listen, so he had to take his family and run. Okay? What Mr. Hodges saw was martial law slash Jacob's trouble. And we're going to go to... Okay, it says, alas, for that day is great, so that none is like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble, but he shall be saved out of it. So martial law is what's going to be happening during the time of Jacob's trouble. And part of that, we can go to Zephaniah, the first chapter. Okay. Yep, Zephaniah 1 and 13. It says, Therefore their goods shall become a booty, and their houses a desolation. They shall also build houses, but not inhabit them. And they shall plant vineyards, but not drink the wine thereof. Okay? And so, but the main thing is, the first half of the precept as it pertains to Dave Hodge's vision. Okay, he said he had a dream that when these Chinese troops uh, uh, shot in the house and then came in and killed any, killed everybody, they came out with uh, goods. And here you go. It says, therefore, their goods shall become a booty and their houses a desolation. Because you have to think about this in real life. Once a tank shoots ammunition through a house, half of it's probably gone. And anybody left in there, once them UN and them FEMA troops roll in there, they're going to get shot. And there's going to be nothing remaining other than, than precious jewelry and apparel. Okay? So that house is going to be completely spoiled. And it's going to be left empty. All right? Okay? And so, uh... We're going to also go to Second Ezra. Second Ezra 15 and 15. And it says, we're going to go to 14. It says, Woe to the world and them that dwell therein, 
for the sword and their destruction draweth nigh, and one people shall stand to fight up against another, and swords in their hand. All right, and we're going to go skip to verse 19 where it says, A man shall have no pity upon his neighbor, but shall destroy their houses with the sword and spoil their goods because of the lack of bread and for great tribulation. So as it pertained to Dave Hodges' dream, this, this is what you saw, Mr. Hodges, and anybody else listening to this sit down okay the lord put the spirit on you to have a dream about martial law where the bible clearly says that in this time during jacob's trouble okay houses are going to get ransacked people are going to get killed and all their precious materials are going to be taken now, as it pertains to your other friend's vision, we're going to go to 2nd Ezra, the 16th chapter. And it says, because he said his friend told him about a vision where this mountain was completely wiped off the face of the earth. And so we're going to go to 2nd Ezra 16. Second Ezra 16 and 13, because what wiped that mountain out was a nuclear missile. And this is how you prove it. It says, for strong is his right hand that bendeth the bow. His arrows that he shooteth are sharp and shall not miss when they begin to be shot into the ends of the world. Behold, the plagues are sent and shall not return again until they come upon the earth. It says the fire is kindled and shall not be put out till it consume the foundation of the earth. OK, it says like as an arrow, which is shot of a mighty archer returneth not backward. Even so, the plagues that shall be sent upon the earth shall not return again. OK, these are nuclear missiles. OK, you can't get simple. And think that that's talking about a literal arrow because you've never seen a man shoot a, have a, a bow and arrow and shoot an arrow from Chicago all the way to Japan. Okay, you haven't seen anybody shoot a, a bow and arrow from Chicago to Detroit, let alone to across the seas to the other end of the world. So it's talking about a nuclear missile because that's the only thing that can completely devastate a mountain. And so we're going to go and to prove that uh, we're going to go to what's that? Second Timothy. Uh, we're going to get this and end it. Uh, oh, sorry. Second Peter. OK, this is second Peter and it says, but the day of Yahweh will come as a thief in the night in which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. OK, the mountains are elements, too. They're made of all types of precious uh, uh, particles of the earth. OK, and it says that these elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth that means the planet itself also and the works that are therein shall be burnt up. So there are many things on the earth that will get burnt up. And a mountain is one of those things. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved. Okay, meaning burnt, wiped off. Okay, totally evaporated as the man described in his dream. Okay, it says, what manner of persons all ye ought to be in all holy conversation and godliness? Looking for and hastening to the coming of the day of the power wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. All right. So we're in the last days, whereas the scripture said the most high is pouring his spirit upon 
not only is his chosen people, but he, he's making even the heathens have visions too. And as you can see, Dave had, he had to actually go and question people to see if he's not going crazy. And he says other people are telling him that they're having similar dreams about martial law. All right, so this goes to show you that we're in the last days and Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai is bringing forth something very terrible. If not only Israelites are seeing these things, but even the heathen nations are seeing Jacob's trouble and nuclear destruction. It's a beautiful thing. And as you can see, he said he, he shook up. He, it shook him to his core because I get when you have visions like that, they're so real. They're so vivid and clear and real to the point where you don't even know that you're dreaming. It's that real. You actually feel as if you're there. Okay, that, that's how strong the spirit is when the Lord puts that type of, of, of vision on somebody. It actually feels like you're there. But this is what Dave uh, had a dream about. Martial law. The purge. Which is coming very, very soon to a neighborhood new you. So if you ain't right with the Lord, you better get right. If you are right with the Lord, you better stay right. So with that being said, I want to give all glory on and praises to Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. Double honors to the Apostle Elders, a great millstone for rule well. And salutations to all you brothers out there pushing this word in love, truth, sincerity, and humility. With that, we want to say Shalom.